Launch check down, countdown net, pad is clear. 10, 9, 8, Launch auto sequence 7, has started. 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Go for launch. Dragon, separation confirmed. Stage one is transonic. Landing lakes have deployed. And Falcon 9 has landed. Hey everyone, my name is Somishri Vastava and I am a structures engineer here at SpaceX. I'll be your host for today's Starlink mission, which marks SpaceX's 50th launch of the year and 249th overall mission to date. Falcon 9 tanks are pressurizing. On your screen is a live view of our Falcon 9 rocket at Space Launch Complex 40 in Florida. At T minus 4 minutes and 45 seconds, the range is green and ready to support. The summer weather forecast for launch was looking a little tricky tonight, but the weather has cleared up, so we're tracking a 90% chance of go for launch. Apart from that, the teams are currently tracking no issues with the vehicle or spacecraft. Now at this point in the countdown, we should see the strong back clamp strong arms back that are just below the payload fairing opening up in a couple seconds. You can see those clamp arms opening up. And after they open up fully, you'll see the strong back recline away from the rocket. And once F9 takes off from the pad, it'll pull away from the rocket even more. 
So the strong back, also referred to as the TE or transporter director, is that large structure that you see next to Falcon 9 and what we use to route electrical connections and propellants to the vehicle. Coming up next at T minus three minutes, we should hear that stage one has completed liquid oxygen loading. Stage one lock load is complete. So at T minus three minutes, the Falcon stage 9 one, first stage is fully loaded with RP-1 and locks, and we're awaiting completion of locks load on the second stage in about 50 seconds from now. Those white clouds around the vehicle are actually vented shield gas from above the LOX tank liquid surface that we vent overboard to maintain pressure in the tank as needed. It's totally normal and when it's being vented and comes into contact with the humid Florida air, it makes that white cloud that you're seeing. As you can see from all that soot on the bottom stage of stage two, lock load is complete. On the bottom of F9, the booster or the first stage of the rocket that you see on screen is flying for its 15th time today. We also just heard that call out for lock load completion on the second stage, which means that Falcon 9 is now fully loaded with 1 million pounds of fuel and liquid oxygen. After liftoff and stage separation, yes, close down. this booster is scheduled to land on our drone trip, a shortfall of Gravitas. And as many of you may already know, successfully recovering parts of the rocket allows SpaceX to refly the most expensive parts of the rocket, which in turn drives down the cost of space access. Coming up next, we should hear a call out over the nets updating us that Falcon 9 is in startup, which means that the flight computers have taken over the launch countdown. Falcon 9 is in startup. And there we just heard that call out that F9 is now in startup. And in a couple seconds, we should hear from our launch director on the final go for launch. LD, go for launch. The launch director has given the final go to proceed for launch. So let's sit back and watch as Falcon 9 takes our 22 Starlink satellites into space. 30 seconds. Fifteen seconds. T minus ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Engine full power. And lift off of Starling. Go Falcon, go Starling. Stage one propulsion is nominal. At T plus 30 seconds, F9 has successfully lifted off from Slick 40 at Cape Canaveral, Florida at 12.01 a.m. Eastern Time. The next major milestone coming up is max Q, which is when the vehicle experiences the greatest amount of external stress as Nominal it ascends through the Earth's telemetry. atmosphere. Vehicle is supersonic. 
Just heard that Falcon 9 is supersonic, which means it is now traveling faster than the speed of sound. Max Q. There you just heard that call from Max Q, which again is when the rocket experiences the largest amount of external stress. We're now about one minute away from a series of key back-to-back -back events. There is NECO, or main engine cutoff, stage separation, SES-1, or second engine start one, and then fairing separation. MECO, or main engine cutoff, is when all nine back, of the engine Merlin chill, engines sorry. on the first stage shut down. Stage separation is when the first and second stages separate from one another. SES-1, or second engine start one, is where we light the Merlin vacuum engine on the second stage. And then it's followed by fairing separation, which is when the two fairing halves separate and fall away from the second stage. So let's keep an eye out for those events, as they're going to happen pretty quickly back to back. Main engine cut off. Stage separation confirmed. MVAC ignition. So as you just saw and heard over the nets, we had successful MECO, stage separation, and SES-1. We're coming up on fairing separation from the second stage in just a few seconds. You can see two of the grid fins on the left-hand side of your screen. Those are deploying on stage one. Fairing separation confirmed. Both of the fairing halves that supported today's mission are flying for the second time, and we'll be attempting to recover both fairing halves using our recovery vessel, Bob. So we'll have intermittent views of stage one, but we do have a great view of stage two. So currently the first stage is on its way back to Earth towards our drone ship, a short fall of Gravitas. And that MVEC engine that's attached to the second stage is continuing its burn, which will last another few minutes. Acquisition of signal, Bermuda. No trajectory. Designed and manufactured by SpaceX, Starlink is the world's largest satellite internet constellation. Starlink satellites operate in low Earth orbit, or LEO, which enables the delivery of high-speed, low-latency internet to people living in remote and rural locations around the globe. Starlink is currently live in 62 countries and 78 markets around the world. As I mentioned earlier, today's Starlink mission marks SpaceX's 50th mission just this year and 249th mission overall. Coming up next in the mission is the entry burn on the first stage, which is the first of two burns it'll go through in preparation for landing.
Stage one entry burn startup. Stage one FTS is safe. There's that call out for stage one entry burn. Uh, the booster has reignited engines one, five, and nine to help it slow down for atmospheric reentry. Stage one entry burn shut down. And there you just saw and heard that call out that entry burn on the first stage has now completed. Stage two FTS is saved. If you take a look at the bottom left-hand side of your screen, you can see that stage one is continuing to slow down, whereas on the right-hand side, you can see that stage two continues to increase speed. Stage one transonic. There's that call that, first, that the first stage is transonic, which means it's traveling near the speed of sound. Coming up in a few seconds will be the landing burn on stage one before it touches down on our drone ship, a shortfall of Gravitas. Stage one landing burn. Expected loss of signal, Cape J6 and PPF. Stage one landing like the poi. Stage one landing confirmed. This Falcon 9 first stage has now successfully launched and landed for its 15th time. Now we're coming up on second engine cutoff in a couple of seconds. And back shut down. And there you just heard, we had Seco 1, and now we are waiting for con confirmation of good orbit. There's that call that we were waiting for. Confirmation of Expected good orbit. Of signal, Bermuda. Today's landing marks our 210th overall landing of an orbital class rocket, including Falcon 9 and Falcon Heavy missions. And with confirmation of successful first stage landing and second engine cutoff, that wraps up our coverage for now. Be sure to check out our social media for confirmation of Starlink deployment. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.